So it's been a huge week in sport. Not only the Olympics is going on, but there has been massive conversation around mental health in sport and as athletes, starting with Simone Biles pulling out of many different events in the gymnastics and the Olympics. And then there were people like Ben Stokes in cricket and even recently Tyrone Mings, the England footballer, has come out and spoken about mental health. And then it has, again, shot the conversation to the top of the trending list. It's brought out the good, the bad and the ugly in many different people in this conversation. But I wanted to talk my perspective and just a few thoughts on if you are in the conversation of mental health, some things to consider and perhaps some methods in which you can look after, prioritize your own mental health. So I think we've made a move as a society with mental health. I genuinely think we are going in the right direction. There are many people that are staying with an old mentality of mental health. They're sticking with this stoic. They're looking at past athletes, past experiences of of mental health and I find it really tough to see people trying to compare former athletes, former leaders, anyone who has been seen as mentally strong with current athletes. Now, there is a balance to be had for sure. If you are trying to compete at the very high end of what you do, getting your mind right should be a priority. I think one of the most common themes throughout the podcast is athletes talking about how their mindset is a huge factor, if not the most important factor. Yes, getting themselves fit and ready to go. However, compared to athletes in the past, there are so many different stresses around now. Even if we just take the most obvious one, which is social media and any media in general, there are people that are throwing out their opinions and they are being thrown at you whether you like it or not. I can't remember who it was, but it was a past guest that I may have had a conversation with on or off the podcast but we were talking about back in their day which we were only talking really 20 years ago when they first started out and even if I think about when I first started out in professional sport my debut was in 2010 Facebook was three years old so barely had any of the, the bells and whistles that it has now but This athlete was talking about when they played a match, when they competed, when they went home, they could shut the world out and they wouldn't have to hear it. Maybe if the newspaper had written an article about them, then they could put it to one side and they wouldn't have to listen to it. Now, you almost don't have a choice. Whether it's someone showing you something, even if you've got your phone off, I'm sure there is someone that it will bring to the attention of an athlete an article, someone's opinion that was said about them. So you pretty much can't get rid of it you can't avoid it even if you are turning everything off and trying to avoid it actively it is almost impossible to to get away from so the good and the bad of this is that we obviously see many of the the trolls and and the the hateful comments that are put out on social media but there is a huge overwhelming number of people that support it and if you do go on to social media and you look at whether it's Simone Biles Ben Stokes, Tyro Mings, they, they're all getting their support, that everyone is getting their support from their communities and the wider community as well. It's, it really is one thing that connects sport as a whole, whether you're a tennis player, whether you're a footballer, rugby player, anyone with mental health issues or anyone that is bringing that conversation to the forefront gets applauded, gets supported by people from other sports. And it is beautiful to see it is exactly what we're looking for and that is a conversation that needs to continue obviously the people that are the loudest are the people with the hateful comments those are the ones that stand out those are the ones that people hear about most often and they just don't really have a place in this conversation because they usually and to be fair funny enough they may be the ones that are actually suffering with mental health so i really do hope that they eventually change their mind eventually change their views and they can hopefully see what it is that these athletes are going through and I think the most important part when people are judging or talking about athletes who have come out and openly spoken about mental health is to put yourself in their shoes really put yourself into that person's shoes and if you're a an older 
adult that perhaps doesn't have the capacity to be playing a sport so maybe can't see it right now imagine that was your son or your daughter imagine if that was someone in your family how do you want people to react to them how do you want to be pe- how do you want people to be speaking about them when someone is raising these issues there are so many people out that are just moving it to one side and not taking into consideration what that athlete is going through. If we take Simone Biles, for example, Simone Biles pulling out of the event, it was such a shock to the world because going in, she's a favorite. Everyone is extremely excited to see her compete. But she tweeted, she she made that tweet just before she was about to compete at or just after she competed in the heats, talking about the weight of the world being on her shoulders. She felt the pressure. Geez, this is a lot. I hide it sometimes. And even in that post, I can't imagine how hard that post must have been to put out because of all the pressure, all of the expectation that everyone else would have had on her, she would have started to feel that. But when she came out and pulled out, people started criticizing her, saying that she was weak-minded for doing it. She was... um, she was weak. Now, I spoke about this with someone and said, if you were looking at this, she was pl- she was in a team event. So not only is she just competing for herself, she's competing for three other gymnasts and her country. So they are all hoping to get a medal, whether that be gold, silver, bronze, they're trying to get a medal. If this was a football team and you have a footballer out in the field kicking the ball around and every time they get the ball, they give it to the opposition you eventually are going to sub that person out. Or even if you are that football player and you are having a shocker, you may even hold your hand up and say, coach, sub me out. i got to go. I'm not on it today. And that's pretty much what Simone Biles did. She subbed herself out so that her teammates could have the best opportunity to get a medal. She knew she was something was up, something wasn't right. And similar to the Andy Murray situation where he pulled out of the singles event with a... I think it was a quad or hamstring strain that he was he was holding to focus on the doubles. No one batted an eyelid when he did that. When he pulled out, knowing that he was jeopardizing his partner's position in the pe- in the doubles, no one really batted an eyelid. But when it was someone with their mental health, there was a massive conversation because it's so easily seen as weakness. And is there any difference in what happened with Simone Biles and Andy Murray? One had a physical injury. The other had a mental injury block, whichever way you want to describe what she went through. And to even think about and listening to the descriptions of what Simone Biles has been going through and and hearing gymnastic experts talk about the twisties and what she is experiencing and the spatial awareness or the lack of spatial awareness that she's experiencing, it sounds utterly terrifying. I can't imagine what tumbling in the air like that feels like. I've never done it. But also, if you get it wrong, you're hitting a harder surface than what you see in their practice events where they, they fall into like the, the pits of foam and or huge crash mats. And, and Simone Biles have put up videos of her getting it wrong. And I, I think you can find those either on her social media or on YouTube. But just by that whole consequence in what she's doing, that is utterly terrifying if you get one false move one half twist too fast one half twist too low too short you could be talking about a a broken anything a broken neck it could be seriously dangerous so taking herself out that environment not only helped her mental health but definitely her physical health and well-being moving forward because she will continue to compete i'm sure going forward it is just so unfortunate and such bad timing that this has happened to her. I think this morning, Adam Jamili of the UK tore his hamstring in the 200 meter semi-final. And again, that is just horrible timing that something like that happens, an injury like that happens. And this is what it can be. You don't necessarily get to choose when those injuries come, whether it is physical or whether it is mental. And that is the view that we should be looking at. The brain is a physical mass in our body and it needs love, it needs caring, it needs the the attention, rest, recovery, like every other part of our body. It also needs the training that goes with it. There is probably other 
elements to or other ends of the spectrum for athletes who perhaps haven't done the mental training where the pressure gets to them the occasion gets to them through the lack of mental training that they've done but here more than likely with whether it is Simone Biles, Ben Stokes, Tyron Mings and plenty others it is an overworking and a burnout end of this spectrum and we should be applauding these athletes to recognize that they are not quite right they're putting themselves one in danger but also they're they're jeopardizing everyone else's chances everyone else especially in team environments so if you're talking about Ben Stokes and Tyron Mings if you're talking about people that are in a team environment they could be jeopardizing the team's goal and that is a huge a hugely brave thing to do to take yourself out of that team because you know you're not bettering that squad that team in that environment you're not at your best so being able to just have this conversation around seeing your mental health like your physical health is one of the parts one of the conversations that we can have and I think it's a really easy analogy to have and just viewing your mind as the way you view your body. You train it, you rest it, you train it, you rest it. You have many different things around you that you can use in order to develop it, to, to recover it. And I speak openly about the techniques that I use, whether it's through meditation, whether it's just general mindfulness training. Also, my actual training itself is a form of mental training. Physically going out there and pushing my body, that's a form of feeling the resilience physically but also pushing my mind to go that little bit further keep pushing it and I think even on this topic it's worth mentioning that as an athlete you're never going to feel 100% all the time so there are going to be days where you are mentally off it and you just have to dig deep you really do have to dig deep but I think the conversations that are going on and what these guys are experiencing with the pressures, the expectations around them, they may be just feeling it that little bit more. And they're, they've they gone to an end of that spectrum that is just almost too far gone. It's past that that moment of, I just need to do a little bit of meditation. They genuinely need rest. They genuinely need to go back, reset, and then go again. And no doubt these guys are going to come back better than ever, because, all for it. And the more we can support them, the more we can we can open up this conversation but also the world in which people can do this without them getting spoken about negatively but sadly I think that's just going to be a part of society for a long time and maybe we have to accept that maybe that's something we need to accept but if you can openly do it yourself and you can do it within your community and you can do it in your small environments whether it's your family your friends your sporting teams and your wider community then we can start to change how people view this so there's so many different areas to to this conversation and I think if there's anything that you're looking for in order to 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 improve your mental health just talking about it really does help just being open about your emotions the methods and techniques that you can use through whether it's breathing exercises in the moment taking time away from your training to just work on some mindfulness meditation practices those are of huge benefit it is not only a form of calming the mind but also focusing the mind so it has that benefit of both a well-being and performance element to it so it could be journaling it could be writing something down it could be watching films just taking that time and, and having the awareness is the goal that you're looking for whether it's that physical awareness so if we think about someone who is perhaps tuned into their body and an athlete that understands their body when it may or may not get injured I've had this before in the past where I felt my hamstring about to tear and I pulled out of a, a match because I knew it was about to go that awareness in the body is the same in the mind just knowing where you're at and I think the more we in society we, we see how people in society have tried to push 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 and then it's not really worked out it's broken so there is a fine balance to know when you need to come out of the environment in order to rest and also when you can perhaps push through it but the only way you're going to know that is through studying your mind studying the the awareness that you have of your mind and, and seeing where it's at noting when you are in a good place what the things that you've done maybe that day that week that year that have put you in a good place the things that you were saying to yourself the people you were listening to the people you were with 
the emotions you felt, all of these things that go with good performances, noting what they are. And then when things aren't so bad, noting what's going on there. And you'll start to see that. And the experiences you get over time will start to teach you more about your your mind. The same, again, keeping this analogy with physical fitness, the same is with your body. The more you, I learned more about my body getting injured than I did training it. I knew where that line was. I knew where that 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 end was for me and pushed that boundary until sometimes I went past that boundary and it broke. But then I knew where that boundary was. I knew where it, where it ended up being. So the same is with your mind. You can push the boundaries, but you have to be very careful not to go over that boundary and keep pushing it, keep pushing it, but recognize when you get close to that boundary and what it looks like when you go past it. And that's where you can... can implementing techniques and methods about managing recovering strengthening your mind are super valuable for you as an athlete not only just on the field but off it because in order to be good we need to feel good and i think lastly the the common theme that is coming up from the athletes that are feeling these feeling the pressure they are feeling this mental stress upon them comes from literally two things expectations and how they see themselves are they viewing do they care about the expectations of others and are they trying to control that'd be the other one trying to control something that you cannot control so the only two things that you can control as an athlete are what you expect of yourself and how you see yourself past that there's nothing really you can do you can't control the expectations of others these athletes they can't control the expectations of the world everyone is going to have their own expectations but they cannot control them i can't control what anyone thinks of me i can only control what i think of myself i can control how hard i work the effort i put in but past that i can't control anything else and if i'm trying to control something that i can't control it creates pressure and that pressure the more we're trying to focus on something we can't control the more and more it is going to build up and internalize and if we don't have a real good grasp on who we are as athletes and what we want then we're going to feel more and more of that pressure that expectation we're going to start thinking extrinsically on the the motivations and values that are in front of us the medals the the more 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 i'm going to get this car this fame the success rather than the intrinsic values like how do i feel the pride i feel within this this experience that I'm having, the work that I've put in, how I feel about myself, I'm happy, I'm good enough as I am. And that would be a question I would pose to any of those athletes, how much of them have done the work on themselves. And I would pose that question to you. Are you doing that work on really having a confident feel of who you are as a person first and then as an athlete second? There are many techniques that you can use along your way, just as you can use for your physical tools to improve your body, to improve your mind. But ultimately, in anything we do, whether it's sport, life, business, we need to have a look at who we are as a person first, the athlete that we want to be second, and then this journey and story that we want to go on third. And once we can do that, the results, what people say about us, they don't really matter. Just everything becomes an adventure. It just becomes great fun. And that's a beautiful place for athletes to be in. And the athletes that are doing so well that these are common themes in who they are as people and what they do and sometimes when that pressure amounts and it gets to that boiling point it is when we have started to listen and focus on the things we can't control what people are saying about us the the things that we have to do or we believe we have to do that we cannot control and trying to control what you can is the most important thing so i may have gone on there a little bit but i think this is a super big topic and something that just by changing the conversation viewing your mental health as your physical health in exactly the same way and making sure it's a priority because without your health in anything physical and mental any goals any motivations any dreams that you have are not possible our health underlines everything so if your mental health is not there and you need to improve it or you feel it needs rest and recovery then go and look at ways in which you can improve that. And and I've spoken in many podcasts and also in this one about ways in which you can do that. And just go out there and try and and give it a go. There's, there's There's nothing stopping you or nothing that is going to harm you trying to improve your mental fitness, your mental strength. 
it can only make you better the same way by just going out there and, and improving your physical health and fitness and your your well-being is going to make you better obviously there is at both ends a spectrum so if you are push it too hard then it becomes too much but just trying to view it where it's at building that awareness that is the goal here that is what we are trying to create in this society as individuals and the more we can be seen doing it as an individual you'll inspire those around you so i encourage you to to look at your own mental health and prioritize it keep going keep building it and i'm going to leave it there for this episode so thank you so much for listening as always if you want to reach out find me on instagram at lewis hatchet you can also get in touch on the podcast lewishatchet.com forward slash podcast where you can find more about the show and more about the work that i'm doing so Thank you for listening and I will see you guys next week.